Hey cosplayers, I'm sure you know that one of the frustrating things about getting a personal amplifier and trying to put it in a mask is that the first thing you notice is this. They're really short wires. But you actually want it to look like this so you can easily install your speaker and battery wherever you want to. So if you want a quick and easy solution to make your setup easier to install without any soldering, this is the video for you. So our example here is a voice amplifier. So what I have here are different cables. These are the same types of cables in here. And what we have are two different types of connectors, and I will show you those two different types of connectors. Typically, on most of these things, what you have is, for power, you'll have something like this. This is called an, a JST-XH. 2.54 millimeters. And these consistently have these little prongs out like this, and I think of it as just kind of a two, two stripes. That's what, that's what I tend to think of. Then we have the JST-PH, which is always a 2.0 millimeter. And I think of this as my one striper. So typically we've got this larger one will go to your battery and this smaller one will go to your audio. Now it really depends on the device, but that tends to be in general what you'll see in these. This is what we're using for audio. What's cool about these packs, it's got the male terminal and it's got the female. Uh, so since we have a female on board for our power and our audio then what we would do is we'd plug our a male into there and then we'll want to come out another female on the other end so we can then plug in our speaker or our battery so how do we do that this is easy i've already done one so i will show you this is what we're doing we're basically extending it so in this context i've done what is it i did the battery so we'll pull the battery out and so now i've got a male and then i've got my female so all i'm doing is extending that width and I've got my female that can now go into here and my male that can now go into here. And I've got a lot more distance, you know, e easy as pie. So what is this bit in between? If you hate soldering or if you just want a quick solution, solder seal wire connectors are heat shrinkable tubing with pre-installed low temperature solder rings and adhesive. When heated, the tubing shrinks and the solder melts to bond the wires together. To heat this up, you will need a heat gun. Set your settings at 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 300 to 350 degrees centigrade. If your heat gun doesn't have settings, then just keep a good eye on those wires and make sure they don't start bubbling and melting. Check out the description for links where you can find all this stuff. I'm actually going to use these smaller ones again because they just line up so well. I'm just going to go in here. I make sure that that I uh, get this in the middle, and then I'll do my black one. Get that in the middle. And you can see that I've I've overlapped my wires and I've made sure that they're under the solder points. So all I've got to do is hit this with some high heat, and these will melt, and we'll solder our wires together and shrink wrap shrink them together. This is the one I use. I got this at Home Depot. Uh, it's great because it's got multiple settings. Anyway, normally I wouldn't do this on a surface, but it's just easier since I'm videoing this. Hopefully my table doesn't burst into flames. It looks like it's kind of melted. It feels pretty toasty. I'm gonna leave it at that. So I think it's still wet. I see it moving. I'm just going to leave it here for a second. If you have it on hand, you could use a multimeter or circuit tester to test for continuity. What that means is essentially just verifying that the wire is connected from one end to the other. Turn your multimeter to the icon that looks like an arrow next to a plus sign or a Wi-Fi symbol. If I touch something here and touch it here, are they connected? Then it will tell you the resistance. If it's one, then it's 100% resistance, meaning nothing is, those aren't connected because you're just getting pure resistance. But if it's zero or uh, below one, then it means they're connected. For a wire that goes straight through, you should expect zero resistance. You want to see above zero if you're testing a circuit board that has resistors and capacitors on it that add resistance to the circuit. And I'm going to test my red wires first. There we go. So it just jumped to zero because I've got red on red. Now I'm going to jump over to black. And there we go, we're at zero. Okay, we got a good connection. This is just something that can help you a lot if you're wondering the device that's broken or is it a connection that's broken? And we now have two viable extensions for our personal amp. Extend this out to however long this is. I can extend this out to however long that is, you know, plus whatever length you already had on there. So quick and easy solution to extend things. If it helped you out, give a thumbs up. Leave a comment on what you want to see next or anything about this. Feel free to subscribe. Take care. I'm out.